Hey everybody. I have a call with one of my students at six and then it's my brother's birthday so I've got to do my chat with y'all early tonight. How about that? Okay, so today's November the 1st. Yesterday was Halloween. Trick or treating. That was fun. And I gotta tell you that I have put some posts up today and I've gotten a little bit of flack back from people. Um, some landlords, I, I kind of made a joke that, you know, today is payday. Tenants' rent is due today. It, it, that's what it is. Your rent is due maybe the 1st through the 5th, maybe the 1st through the 7th, whatever. My tenants, the rent is due on the 1st. It's late if it's not paid by the 5th, by 5 on the 5th. So it's payday, all right? And I put some memes up and it was good and I had a laugh out of it. And I got a couple people giving me um, some hate over it. And I gotta say, I'm okay with it. Because one of the people that was giving me a little bit of slack um, sent me a message. Uh, Dennis Wood put a message up that was very similar. But another guy sent me a message that told me I should not be encouraging people to buy houses. I should not be encouraging people to become landlords. And I should basically keep my opinion to myself. And y'all, I thought that was uh, sort of rude, totally hilarious. And so I asked him, why should I not encourage people to have a real estate portfolio? And he was like, well, I had a house and I, I got screwed. Those people didn't pay me. Did you screen them? Did you check their references? Did you make sure they had a job? No, they were a friend of mine and they moved in. Okay, well that's your fault, dude. If you would learn from somebody who is a landlord who can teach you how to do this stuff so you can make some money, maybe you wouldn't be in that position. Just saying. Um, Dennis was on earlier too though and he said, you know, landlording isn't for everybody because his tenants woke up this morning and they heard water and there was like three feet of water in the basement his water heater is ruined um he's got all sorts of stuff to do over at the house but he's had the house for eight years they've been great tenants he's been i mean and it's not his only rental house this was a bump in the road and if you're a good landlord, you can expect and plan on bumps in the roads. You're, you will hire a property manager to take care of this stuff, okay? Um, or you can learn how to protect yourself as well as possible. And you also got to consider that when you're going to be a landlord, you got to know which state you're in because different states have different laws. And I mean, I'm in Tennessee and county to county we have different laws. So you gotta know if you're a landlord friendly state or if you're a tenant friendly state. You gotta know if you wanna accept um, section eight vouchers or not. You gotta know if you want high-end um, business people who are gonna have high-end emergencies when they're gonna call all the time. I mean, just because somebody pays a lot to rent a house, it doesn't mean that they're gonna leave you alone and take care of it like it was their own house. I'm just saying. So, we've been talking a little bit about some tricks that, you know, tenants can do. And sometimes they could just be in a bad mood. They could not like you as a person and they could ruin your house. I, I don't know what to say about that except that you have to be prepared to protect yourself either with an attorney or with insurance or whatever you're going to do. But... I'm not going to stop telling people that they need a real estate portfolio because I mean like 80% of millionaires have real estate portfolios. Don't you think they've been through a bump in the road at one point or another in one of their jobs and one of their businesses and something? Don't you think that they've been there? And y'all talk to me here. Give me some comments. So if I know I'm on the right track or not, the other thing is real estate and real estate investments have completely freed me from having to have a regular nine to five job. I've been trying to talk to people all day and it was like 4.35, all of my messages like completely dried up. They went to zero 
between 4.30 and 5. And I was like, holy cow, what happened? I've been talking to people all day, blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, oh, yeah, people just got off work. They're driving home. They're going to get the kids. They're getting ready to go to ball practice or going out to eat or whatever. They don't want to talk to me now. And I'm, I'm trying to get some people on the phone tomorrow so I can talk to them. Um, so I expect tonight, after they watch the video, they'll be like, oh, yeah, she sent me that link. I, I better schedule an appointment with her. It's fine. Whatever. But there was a lull. And I thought, you know, today's the first day of the month. I'm watching my bank account all day long, hanging out at the house. Abby and Labby and I are doing our little doggy thing. And we're watching the money come in. I'm in a group called Hustle on Purpose and I put a very similar funny kind of landlording meme up in Hustle on Purpose and I was like, guess what landlords, your hustle is on purpose today. Go get your money, honey. <laughs> you know, like that's good stuff. So those are some tricks. Let's talk about some treats with tenants. And I have a, oh, hey Kim. Um, I have a wonderful story so when I teach people how to buy houses, I like to buy houses in your neighborhood, wherever you live, because you already like that neighborhood. It's gonna be easy for you to drive by and check on progress. It's gonna be easy for you to drive by if you need to collect rent. It's just gonna be easier for you all the way around in every way I can think of if you buy houses in your neighborhood or if you can buy houses if you can't get them in your neighborhood, then get them in one neighborhood. Pick a neighborhood and buy as many as you can, and that way you become a big fish in a small pond. Okay? You pick up one house a year in the one neighborhood. You pick up another house that in that neighborhood the next year. You pick up two houses in that neighborhood the next year. Suddenly, out of 20 houses, you've got four of them. You're pretty much the controlling majority of that neighborhood now. If you let it go to pot and you put some crappy tenants in there, it's your fault. You put some good tenants in there. You put some lease option tenants in there. You improve the property values. All your neighbors are going to love you. You fix the rental prices in that neighborhood. Exactly. You bring everything up if you're a good investor. And you can only do that if you're going to be in one neighborhood. If you're trying to sprawl yourself out all across town, you can't do that, okay? And another thing is, when you have the neighborhood, yeah, you might not want them to know where you live, but if you live in the neighborhood, it's gonna be really hard to keep them from knowing where you live. I talked to a woman one time though, and she was like, you know what? I wanna have a rental house in every state. And I was like, oh my God, that's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. Why would you do that? That means you need to deal with 50 utility companies, 50 utility deposits, you got 50 attorneys, you got 50 sets of laws, you got 50 sets of plumbers you gotta know, you got 50 electricians. I mean, you're, you're gonna spend all your time just trying to remember who you use to fix what. But if you have all your houses in one little neighborhood, it is super easy for you to call your guys and be like, hey Lonnie, uh, two houses down from mine, I just got that one, we're gonna have to do the usual on it, so if you just wanna go over there and start ripping stuff out, knock yourself out, go for it bud. Or if, you know, I got a triplex up in Morristown and I've got a different handyman up there, Steve goes up to Morristown for me, and I can say, hey Steve, I bought a house, it's two streets away from the triplex, and they already know where it is, they already know you know, how they can route it into their schedule. If you've got an emergency call, like here comes the ambulance, you can hear it now in the background. If you've got an emergency call or you need to send somebody out to the neighborhood, you might be able to look at two or three different places at the same time. That's what I like about apartments. Okay, and Julie's on here now. If we need something done at one of the apartments and they go see number four and number eight comes out and she says, oh yeah, I've got a problem too. Well, then instead of having two different uh, drive outs, two different um, mileage fees, and my tenants, or my handy guys, they can just fix it all while they're there, you know? So I think you should be a big fish in a small pond. You should pick one neighborhood, pick one zip code, and it doesn't have to be yours. It's nice, it's convenient if it is yours, but there's definitely some benefits to not being near your tenants. But you don't get the treats like I did last night. 
So Abby Live and I were getting ready to go to mom's for dinner last night and we didn't have any trick-or-treaters last year so we weren't going to trick-or-treat this year. Well, I was loading the car and four little trick-or-treaters came up my driveway and they were cute as can be. I don't, I don't even remember what they were dressed up as because I saw all of y'all's cute kids dressed up last night so I don't know what these kids were but they, you know, held out their um, bags and I said, what do you say? And they said, trick or treat. And I said, okay, well, I've got, I've got water because I'm that neighbor that hands out water instead of candy. And I said, do y'all live around here? And they said, yeah, we live on the stone house in the corner, on the corner. And I was like, that stone house on the corner? I was like, is your dad named, um, you know, and I, I, I said their dad's name and they're like, yeah, do you know him? And I was like, yeah, I know him. Y'all rent from me. That's super cool. Here, ha, ha, I do have some candy. Hold on. I forgot I had my candy. And so I gave him my candy instead of just the Halloween candy, you know. And I gave him some water. And I said, you know, tell your dad. I said, hi, blah, blah, blah. They were super, super cute. And as they were walking away, they're at my house, right? Their dad has a landscaping company. And there was three girls and a boy. And the boy came back. Like, they started all walking down the driveway, walking down the sidewalk. The boy came back, and he was like, um, my dad can fix this if you want him to. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? He can, what, what could he fix? He was like, well, he's a landscaper. And this kid, I mean, he's tiny. Like, uh, my stepsons are 11 and 9, and this kid was smaller than them. So, I don't know, maybe 5. My kid guessing skills are complete crap. But he was smaller than my stepboys, so I know he was probably younger. So, he, he was standing there talking to me like an adult. And he said, all of your, your flower beds, you need mulch. You need to trim this one. My dad can fix that. You, you call my dad, and he'll come up here and fix this. And I was like... Well, it looks like my yard boy's got some competition because now the tenants' kids are coming up here and saying that their dad could do a better job. But y'all, that was so sweet, okay? And if you're not in the neighborhood with your tenants, with your renters, with, you know, your people, with your houses, you're not going to get treats like that. I mean, that was like a super, like, I was really excited because if you pay attention um, there's going to be a lot of articles you're going to see that millennials are crap. They're a waste of time. They don't have any energy. They're not going to amount to anything. And hi, I'm a millennial. Thanks. But then I also catch myself sometimes saying, looking at little kids and saying, you know, they're never going to stand a chance. They're not going to learn how to talk to people. They're not going to learn how to be salesmen. You know, how, if, if these, if I can't teach these kids' parents how to buy houses, who's going to be around to teach these little guys? how to buy houses, right? So that little guy that was here last night warmed my heart so much because he is going to be a killer businessman when he grows up. You know? I mean, he could he could see that I needed mulch. He could see that the yard just needed some tending to and he wasn't afraid to say, you know, my dad can do that, but I know in you know, 10 years, he's going to be helping his dad and he's going to be out quoting on stuff and he's not going to be afraid to talk to people and say, I can fix that. I can do that. I have my crew out here tomorrow. We'll take care of this whole situation. And that kid, that's, that kid is going to make it in this world because it takes some gumption, it takes some haters, it takes some um, bad knocks, and it takes a little bit of learning to figure out how to make it. And that kid's five, and he's learning what to look for. His dad's teaching him how to talk to people, how to say, I can fix that, that's a little bit off. And not like in a really offensive way, but in a way that I can fix this for you. I'm the man for this job. And I was really happy to see that last night. Because that kid could have said, thanks for the candy, thanks for the water, and been gone. But he took a couple extra seconds to try to get a job out of me. And I love it. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna have to call my tenant and tell him I'm hiring him because his kid impressed me. <laughs> but... I want you to think about your kids for just a second. What are you teaching your kids? 
I mean, I'm glad you're teaching them to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, you're welcome, hold the door for ladies, all that other stuff that you're teaching them, and I know you're teaching them that. But are you teaching them how to get up and go to work and spend 8 to 9 to 10 to 12 hours a day making somebody else rich? Or are you getting up and showing your kids how you work to make yourself rich so that you can set your kids up to be rich? I mean, think about it. Like a lot of people I talk to, first of all, I talked to a woman today. She called about a two bedroom, two bath house that I have in Dandridge and it's 800 bucks a month depending on how much you can put down because it's a lease option. And she was like, oh my gosh, I don't even have $800, much less anything to put down on a house. I need something like $400 a month with a $400 security deposit. And I was like, holy crap, are you serious? That's the kind of people we're dealing with these days? Like, y'all, we're in a world of hurt. And that woman probably taught her kids that same thing. So I want to know, what are you teaching your kids? Are you, are you teaching your kids to pay somebody else? every month or are you like my mama she taught me to go to the mailbox and get the rent out go get my money out of the mailbox today's the first of the month go get my money out of the mailbox is that what you're teaching your kids or are you teaching your kids that oh my god we got we can't go out to eat because I got to send the landlord the check for the rent your kids are watching you your kids are watching you. Your grandkids are watching you. They are learning from you. That tenant kid that I talked to last night, I bet he grows up and buys a house. I bet they aren't my tenants much longer. I bet they figure out a way that they could buy a house instead of paying me rent. And then I'll have to find somebody else to pay me rent. But are you teaching your kids to pay rent? Or are you teaching your kids to collect? Collect rent. And if you own your house, fine. If you got a mortgage on your house, you pay the mortgage every month. You're responsible for it. You don't have anybody else chin in towards your mortgage. So, if you want to talk to me tomorrow about how you can set your kids up, because wouldn't it be awesome? I mean, when you. When you turned 18 and you were like, all right, I'm going to college, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to get married, I'm going to buy a house, I'm going to live happily ever after, boom, done. That was decided for you, right? Your kids are probably not going to do that because the world's changing really fast. And if you're not figuring out how to set your kids up, then, oh, Sherry, hey, uh, then they're, they're going to be stuck. They're not going to know what to do. So I got a call. Sherry just reminded me. I have a call at 6. Um, Sherry's one of my students, so we've got to go. Uh, another thing, though, if you want to set up a call with me, I've got spots available tomorrow. I'll teach you how you can set up your kids and how you can enjoy some retirement instead of paying all your bills and then not having anything left. So, I'm out tonight. Y'all have a great day. Tenants can be tricks or they can be treats, but if you treat them right they'll treat you right. Bye y'all.